when Universal Studios first opened, the groundbreaking King Kong ride, Confrontation, came along with it. This was a novel new ride, which contained never-before-seen levels of technology, along with a track that was like no other theme park ride anywhere. Guests would sit up in a gondola and fly over a city that laid in ruins below. The day I became obsessed with trying to explore that city. I remember being up in that gondola and I looked out the window, and on my right hand side in the distance, there was a little light that turned on inside of one of the second story windows. Then I saw shadows moving around inside. One of them was making really odd gestures, throwing their hands up in the air. Then another one came up behind it and looked like it hit the first one with something. But by the time I realized what I was even seeing, the ride was past that point. I told my parents about it, but they were convinced it was just part of the ride. It was so random though. I mean, I know the theme of it is a disaster type event, but this seemed unrelated to King Kong. Why would the designers have made it look like there was some kind of fight or something inside a little window in the city? Either way, the mystery of the event really inspired me to take steps towards one day finding the answer. Most people throughout the process of growing up Forget about the weird little interest they had as a kid, but for some reason this one stayed in the back of my mind for years. Once I was 18, I decided to move a few hours south to go work for the park. It took me about a year, but eventually I was able to get hired onto that ride specifically, and finally achieve my goal. The day that I was first able to walk that track after the ride closed was so impactful for me. Exploring the set's smoky backdrop, with the flames and the giant Kong in the distance, it really made all those years of focus worth it. I mean, I realized it was kind of a strange goal to have, but at that moment, I was just happy I'd accomplished it regardless. That night I was tasked with searching for guest items that may have fallen off the ride during the day, which gave me a great chance to explore. So of course the first thing I did was head over to that little building where I'd seen the light all those years ago. When I looked up at it from the front, there didn't seem to be a light on. That confirmed the suspicion I had had all along. The other lights and effects were still going, so why would that one be off now? The window light couldn't have been part of the ride. As I walked behind this set, I saw there was a little hidden doorway to get to the back, and a little stairway leading up to the second floor. Up on the next floor, there were a couple doors, one leading to a storage closet, and the other just labeled private, with a deadbolt on it. That was definitely the room. I knew I would probably get in trouble for trying to get in, but I had been waiting so many years for this. One way or another, I had to see what was behind that door. So over the next few weeks, I made it a point to find out where the managers kept the keys for it and come up with a way to get one. I discovered though that it wasn't going to be as easy as I'd thought. None of the team leaders had a key for that room, and every time I asked somebody about it, they just said that it hadn't been opened since they started. Then finally, when I was talking to one of the lifers, you know one of those guys that's worked at a place for like 20 years and hasn't even tried to move up, he told me that he had seen the room opened one time before, a really long time ago, and it was by one of the special VIP groups. He also said it didn't look like the manager had a key, but there was someone in their party with one. They also apparently spent a really long time in there, and he never actually saw them leave. So he assumed it was after park close. I just had to get in. There was no other way around it. I was pretty much willing to lose my job at that point. So I took a photo of the lock, and when I went home, I began researching ways to pick it. I purchased a lock picking set online, and began practicing on the front door of my apartment. Before I knew it, I was getting the lock open within five minutes every single time I'd try. So I decided I was ready. The next day, I brought my lockpicking set in for a closing shift, when there'd be less people in the park. On my way to work, I started feeling nervous. I had never really gotten into any trouble in my entire life, and felt like this was kind of uncharacteristic of me. Oddly enough, too, I noticed it was a full moon out, and thought that that maybe had something to do with my abnormal behavior. As I approached the security gate at the back of the park, I attached my lockpicking set to my car keys, and put them in the bin. Not really looking for things like that, the guard didn't even say a word about it. When I got to the ride, there was a sort of weird vibe there that day. My boss seemed to be on edge and didn't really talk to me much at all. 
I figured that was better though. Hopefully I could get some time alone and I could get into that room without anyone noticing I was gone. I was tasked with checking the track again. That was my chance. As soon as I got out there, I quickly ran over to the building and went up the stairs. Starting to pick the lock, I realized it was easier than I had expected. I had the door open within a couple minutes. Making sure to be as silent as possible, I quickly opened the door and locked it behind me. When I switched on the lights inside, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was an entire room dedicated to King Kong. Only it wasn't just the ride. There were posters from the movies, props from sets, and old photos that appeared to be an actual research team on an island. I came across a large book on one of the counters, which spoke about actual sightings of a gorilla-like beast. As I continued reading, I found out about a dark demonic force which has the beast at its beck and call. This dark force would apparently stop at nothing to destroy man, and the only way to fend it off was human sacrifice. That sort of put everything into context for me. I gazed over at the center of the room, and I noticed there was a stone sacrificial altar. That must have been what was happening when I looked through the window all those years ago. I had witnessed a murder. A real, actual murder. Suddenly I got a message on the radio from my boss. He said that a VIP tour was here, and that I needed to get back to my post. Then I heard the lock at the door begin to turn. I scrambled to find a hiding place, and quickly got into a small storage closet, just as the door opened. Through a slit in the door I looked out, and saw a group of four men and an older woman, all in suits. Then there was a young, casually dressed woman, hanging off of one of the men. She seemed very intoxicated, and was in total party mode, spinning around and caressing him on the back of his head. The older woman, not saying much, walked back to a set of drawers and grabbed a large hammer from it. Then she took out a plastic apron and quickly put it on. The young woman closed her eyes and began singing as she walked up behind her. Two of the men grabbed the girl by her arms and gently sat her down on the stone. She swayed back and forth, laughing innocently, not having a clue what was going on. The old woman lifted up the hammer and just as she was about to strike, my manager's voice filled the room, and all the havoc I had forgotten had turned down the volume on my radio. They all turned and looked toward the closet. Out of options, I jumped out of the closet with my phone in my hand and told them if they came any closer, I'd call the cops. I knew they probably couldn't save me in time, but at least they couldn't prevent the cops from showing up. Luckily, it worked. The group froze, unsure how to proceed. Holding my phone out, I pointed to the girl and ordered them to bring her over to me. One of the men lifted her up and slowly helped her over. I took her by the arm and opened the door. Just as we were about to leave, the old woman approached and said, You can't imagine how much of a mistake this is. You will be paying for it. Forever. Not wanting to listen, I slammed the door and ran out of the room. I never even returned to my position that night. I had no idea what kind of connections these people had. So when I talked to the cops, I just put in an anonymous tip. I didn't want anyone to know who I was. I knew they'd probably find out from my manager anyways, but I had to try to be as cautious as possible. I still haven't heard about an investigation or anything like that, but as far as I know, the girl was fine. She made it back home, and, and to my knowledge, she's still okay. I'm thinking she'd apparently been picked at random, for whatever horrific thing they were about to do. I honestly am not sure what they were trying to prevent, but I do know whatever it was, there's no way it could justify their means. Now I just live one day at a time, hoping and praying that whatever comes next isn't a worse atrocity than the one that I had stopped. Hey, it's Mr. Freaky. I hope you enjoyed that original creepypasta. I wanted to let you all know that we're going to be doing another drawing contest. Only with this one, I want you all to submit an original monster. Come up with a name for him too. And remember that originality is definitely taken into account very highly. So go ahead and email me your submissions, as well as how you'd like to be credited. I'm going to include a link to my email below. I should be posting the top three in the community tab in the next couple days. Have a horrific evening, and remember to stay spooky, my friends.